being full should go up to 220. So I figured, you know what? I might as well, I did already wash the front bumper. You can see here it's nice and clean. However, I think it's about time we install some more stuff here. See that? He looks like a young buck again. He's all nice, clean shaved, no more peach fuzz here. So that was, oh man. <laughs> That's only one thing. These bugs are really attracted to these kind of things. You can see it's already done. It's all taken care of. So now what we're gonna do here, since we got more cars here now than we did before. So you can see it's quite a bit now before we were just starting. So what I'm gonna do now is gonna go ahead and prepare to do the ceiling. And I got my heat promoter here. So let's see here. I got some alcohol rub, my heat promoter. We're gonna use 94. You remember we're gonna try to do it for the other one? So let's do it now. Here we go. This one's peeling off a little bit still. Uh, so I think a heat promoter might help it to prevent it from lifting. So let me go ahead and just put some heat promoter on here and see if it can better um, cause it not to lift like this again. So, and then I'll also use the heat promoter on the other side. First of all, what you want to do is probably clean it with alcohol. So let's do that first. Uh, I got plenty of alcohol, ibuprofen alcohol. This is just to clean the surface area from dirt. Um, that way there's no dirt or anything like that. I just need one little pack. Should cover me for these three, two small areas that's the side of the triangle there we go so what we'll do is we'll just give it an alcohol rub areas that we want this is not heat promoter it's just alcohol rub just to keep it clean and clear from any kind of dirt you'll see no dirt but thank goodness so we're just gonna clean it kind of rub it through just to make sure there's no dirt at the edges and stuff like that I gotta be careful about edges on my PPF I don't want it to lift like you see this one right here it's already starting to, well, it's not lifting, but it's just making sure so there, there's dirt trap in there. I think this will actually serve a dual purpose. It'll actually block more dirt from getting into the PPF, as well as adding on extra security of protection. So anyway, I'm just running my finger through here. Just trying to get any oils and stuff off of here. Because even PPF itself. Okay, so there we go. We're using the same. We don't have to switch. It's such a small area here. I'm just going to flip it around a little bit out just get that alcohol to clean the area up really nicely there we go see me peeling it here and any other areas that is starting to lift might as well get it in now just don't want the alcohol to uh we want the alcohol just to clean any dirt or oil so i'm just gonna go all around it okay so got that done let's go and use our promoter i use the 94 promoter here You'll get them usually when you order like vinyl stuff, they'll usually give them to you. But I only have one left here and this is it. So it smells really funky, almost like primer paint or something. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna go all around it just to be sure. I got a little bit, like I'm cornering it. This one, especially. This area here. Okay, I have some left. Use the rest of it. You think that it's an answer to 3M sticking? So if you don't have 3M, don't use adhesive mode adhesive to actually help promote. So you don't just use this clean surfaces, you have a hole for that one. So here we go. Charger might be already done already almost. So let's see. It still says five minutes, so we still got some time. It's 219 right now. The last drop is always the longest. Okay, so I already got the heat promoter on here. So what I'm gonna do is just give it a good rub. I don't have any heat. Preferably you want to do this with a little bit of heat, but since I'm out in the middle of the supercharger area, nothing I could do here. So I've got to work well. Anyway, it's looking really good actually. This heat promoter looks like it's doing the trick. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh. A little too fast there for the rub. Okay, you want to rub it outside of it, not, <laughs> not in it. But I think this is really good. I think this is really going to do it here. Okay, let's give this guy a good press. See how far they are. Look how bad they are right here. All right. So, heat promoter is supposed to bring out the heat some more. We clean it with a little alcohol, and now we putting some of that 94 adhesive on there. 
Again, it would be nice to have a little bit of heat, but work what we did. This one is really good. Looks like it's, this one's getting nailed in there really good. He's from other supposed to help. I'm not sure what it does, but it's just really, I don't know, it just brings out the heat some more, I guess. See there. So just want to use your thumb, give it a good press. All the areas here. All right. Now it looked like the other one for the trail thing. I should have brought some pair of scissors. I wasn't thinking. So I'll have to, when I get back, I'll get a pair of scissors and cut it. All right, so this is the best we can do for this one. This is it. If it doesn't stick for this long, then so be it. We try. Should put a little bit of reinforcement tape here without having any on me either. All right, so we'll close this guy. And coming back to the trunk here. There we go. Coming back to the trunk here, you can see here. We did a pretty fantastic job. Uh, I want to make sure that I got a little bit of piece of the PPF as well as the actual film. Let's see if I get that resolution there for you. See that? So it's on the PPF, half of it, and the other half is on the actual uh, paint itself. And I just kind of made sure, you can see here you follow the groove, made sure there was a spacing. So if you look at it from this side, you can see if there's any coming out protruding. See that? It looks pretty good. Pretty fine. I guess we're back to where we were. We're the only few people here left. So everyone's just pretty much tap off and went, went their merry way. I think we're about to be done too, actually. Oh, it says supercharging time remaining. It's 2.20 right now. It says, it says five minutes remaining. That's fine. All right. As long as it doesn't say complete and you're idling, it'll charge you like 50 cents per... I think it's 50 cents per minute, I believe. However long you're still plugged into the network. So you definitely want to take it off as soon. So when I get a chance to, I'll clip this nicely. Right here. And I'll clip a little bit right here. You can see on the edge. Right there. I'll clip that guy a little bit off too. Kind of give it a slant. So my cousin owns a barber shop. I'm not sure if I'll make it all the way over there. But I'll try to get a pair of scissors when I can. And just snip it off. But for right now, it's not going to be a big deal. You know. I can just lift it a little slightly. But the idea of this is to prevent dirt from getting in. So let's see how it closes, shall we? Make sure there's no tools. Creates a little bit better seal. Yeah, I see that. See that? It's because of the Tesla gap. So that's why it's facing that way. It wasn't that hard to install, actually. So look at that one. It's squished already. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, we'll get a pair of scissors and nip it in the butt. No big deal. I left a little bit of adhesive tape for it to stay on so I can actually just, you know, I tried to cut it with a pair of pliers. You can see here. I did my best, but... A pair of pliers ain't going to do it. So it's kind of neat to be able to come out here, get some fresh air. Oh man, it's just been kind of cooped up. Uh, so this is good. This is all settled. So everything is also good. We're just going to snip it off and that's it. That's what I'm going to do. And I didn't see this side, so let's see how this one closes. See here, this prevents, supposed to prevent more dust and seal. See that? I can see how it does it. There you go. Prevents, uh, dust gets easily flown in and gets into these cracks. So that's what that rubber seal does. I think it's gonna work really well. I'll follow up with you guys on that one. See how it actually does overall. But you can see here, it's solid black. So it's pretty nice. It's pretty much flowed all in already. So it's good. See, this one's even come to all the way to the edge. Yeah, we're gonna cut that off for sure. But I just wanna see where it flows, see that? You can't even see it, the gap is really minuscule. I'm gonna lighten it up here. So I think it did overall pretty good. I think it's time now, we gotta get going. Up, oh, charging complete, there we go. Yeah, we don't wanna have idle. So my total cost to fill it up, like I said, I got 13 to $12. There it is, that's my cost right here. $12.60, Taha Ranch, to fill it up to 200 miles. So not bad, huh? 200 miles for 12 bucks. Can't beat, can't beat that. There you go. This one. Is that it? All right, we don't have to worry about closing. It closes automatically, see? Car does 70 miles easily going uphill. I mean, I don't even get scared, so I'm gonna lower to 65. Uh, we're, we're passing through Taha Ranch. 
It says I'm going to be in my destination in about 59 minutes. So everything's going good. Uh, I might meet up my cousin. He owns a barber shop. Maybe get some clippers, snip that little uh, little end piece there. You know, a little rubber. I forgot to show you the instruction, but it's very self-explanatory. It's just pretty much, it's supposed to be a P-shape, right? With a little, you know, um, you know, the rubber seal and it has a little P. Well, what it is, is you face the, the end of the P outward like this so it can block the dirt from going in. You guys pretty much seen a little bit of it. So I'll, I'll explain to you again. I'll show you the schematic again. You can see here I'm doing 65. I could do 70 if I wanted to. But it's coming to a turn. It's turning on its own. This is how much I have faith in Tesla. There you go. Beautiful canyon there out. So there we go. It's kind of nice. It's like your second eyes. I still keep my hands on the wheel though. Right here off of Santa Clarita. I realize you can just push this right here. You don't actually have to swipe down. That's just amateur of me to not know that. <laughs> so there you go. I have about 66% left. Um, if I actually was to make a round trip, it would usually calculate. Uh, estimate round trip back to La Tajon. I'll still have 34%. Uh, which if I decide to or I can go further down Long Beach, which is another two and a half hour drive We'll see the time right now is about 530. Uh, I'm gonna see how I feel first getting some tacos uh, First first things first tacos <laughs> And my sister is so paranoid of germs and everything, but uh, these tacos are so good She still wants me to bring some to her. So that's what I'm gonna do <laughs> So let's go ahead and get step-by-step -step directions before I lose it I think this is it right here in this little shopping area here you can see here oh yellow Ooh, we're turning in yellow Ooh, look at all these stop signs all right that's what i love about tesla it picks up and go quickly you don't have to worry and we are here they only do take out unfortunately now um but that's okay you know i enjoy sitting in the car and eating now anyways now that i have my elon uh tray there the self-serve uh i think I just park well it's right here Zynga Grill. I don't know how you pronounce it, but I think it's a Z-I-N-G-A. They only offer takeout, so it shouldn't be too hard to find a parking spot. Most people should just go. Look at that. There's carts full here. Uh, I still get a little paranoid where I park my car. Uh, I think it'll be here. It's fine. Not sure. Surprisingly, no one's stocking up on things, huh? Take my wallet with me. And let's get going here car and park usually I put the shades on but it's nice and cool weather today again this is Santa Clarita right here we're at so beautiful Santa Clarita area see there got state of brothers and everything here car will lock on his own hey let's see how our gator is doing by the way um, and also I washed the front already so it's only been what over the over the grapevine kind of drive let's see the new bug splats all right see one two three little spaticles of hair not too bad they'll build up again it's just no way of getting these guys off. Uh, I turned my wheel this way, but so far the gator's holding up pretty well. Um, don't see any problem with the gator at all. I'm not sure if I can drive all the way to LBC. It's going to be 7.30 by the time I hit back home, probably be already midnight. So you can see here the gators are still flushed in all angles. So I'm not, I'm not worried about the gator anymore. Um, I think one of them were really protruding out before because it was so compact. He said that you're supposed to leave a five millimeter gap, you know, right here. So you can see this one has a pretty good gap already. Don't have to worry about the gap on this one, but I think it was this wheel here that we really tightened it. I remember, I'm not sure how I reversed the car. Could it must be this way. Yeah, this is the one that's compacted really bad. You can see here, there's no, there's no wig room at all. So he said it might be a problem when it's summertime when it expands or contracts, but we'll see. We'll keep an eye on it for safety if it creates any problem for us or anything like that. But so far, I think it should be fine. Yep. Let's go and grab our uh, Korean tacos here, my favorite spot. Let's see here, Get focus on it. So unfortunately, it's only takeout. So it's right there, this is it. They're getting a little smoke, I don't wanna take that part of it. So let's go ahead and go in here. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> so there he is, right here, my favorite Korean taco place. It's okay. <laughs> uh, oh man. Oh, no, they posted a sign right here. You come back, we only serve takeout. Uh, I travel all the way from Fresno just to get some taco. Oh wow, very vacant. Well, a little further than Fresno for me. Here's a little takeout menu. I'll ask her, can you uh, separate my sister's order? And we go separately. I give it to her and then I go. 
Your name is uh, uh, Michael? Michael? Yeah, Michael. I'll pick it up for her. She paid already, right? Kim. Yeah, Kim, I pick up for Kim. And yeah. then uh, you have she mine? Paid already. Yeah, and I'll pay for mine. No, she paid already. She got three and I got three. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I figured so she goes, you didn't order yet. I said, what are you talking about? I just spoke to her. She, she, she ordered uh, one chicken, one beef, and uh, two spicy pork. Okay. One, yeah. One beef. No worry. One beef. How you doing? Spicy pork. No, no, for me, all three spicy yeah, pork I are like the that, That's yours. Okay. So for, her, for her, was one beef and one uh, two spicy pork. You can make hers, I'll wait. Okay. No problem. Yours, right? Yeah, yep, that's it. Perfect. I figured so, because she said, um, uh, I ordered it. Why didn't you order yours? I said, no, I ordered mine. <laughs> oh, we're arguing it. Okay. You can ring me up. Either way, the same price. So this is mine, all spicy pork. Yeah, that's perfect. Yours. That's perfect for me. And I'll eat in the car. It'll be what, 15 more minutes? Uh, yeah. 15 more minutes? Yeah. Okay, I'll just eat the in the car. So. Keep everything sanitized. Yeah, would, you, would you sign for her? Yeah, yeah, no. Oh, for her? Yeah, yeah, I can sign for her. Uh, perfect. There we go. Take some menu with me. Awesome. I have a pen for you back. Thank you. <laughs> Do you need some pieces for her? Yeah, yeah, I'll give that to her. No problem. Thank you so much. And I will see you guys back. Sorry, confusing. No, no. Sorry about that. <laughs> no worry. I figured so because when she mentioned you didn't order yet, I'm like, nah, I ordered. <laughs> I knew something's going to happen. <laughs> okay, I'll see you guys uh, 15 minutes. All right, so anyway, I can't eat in there, unfortunately, but I'm going to show you guys how good this thing is. Super delicious. And I'll have to explain to my sister that uh, she just paid for my order and I'm paying for her order. So it's the same thing, no biggie. I told my sister, the reason why is uh, she didn't want to give me cash just to make sure it's not contaminant. So that's why we end up actually sharing food. Uh, so I don't mind delivering for her. All right. So let's see here. I think my Elon tray is here, right? I might put, oh no, I have it in back here. So no big deal. When I get in, I can just open it. All right, let's check out these freaking tacos here. Why are they worth the trip to come six and a half hour drive for? So first things first, gear up. There we go. Put it in the park. We'll pick one, one of these cute baskets out. They come with chips and salsa. I mean, it used to be a trend food, but I think it really is mainstream now. Uh, you won't find this too much in the, in the area, but it's, they're called Korean tacos. It's like a fusion of Korean making Mexican food, right? Everything is just perfectly good about this one. Dude, I can't eat napkins. Ooh, I didn't have any napkins. It's fine, I'll just use this. Okay, here we go. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of salsa. We got 15 minutes anyway, so we might as well. This is where we're at, Zynga Grill. This location right here. And, oh man, look how greasy and good this is. Oh yeah, gotta have it. This one is a spicy pork belly. I kid you not, I can eat Korean barbecue. I like, normally I can just eat Korean barbecue, right? And I still, there's just something about these tacos where I can still have room for these tacos. They're just, they're separated, they're different. Look at all that, good. If they marinate the meat just right and they got this little fermented chili sauce, it's like killer. Spicy, yet salty. What makes it all worthwhile. Woo! Thank you, Elon Accessories, for holding down the fork. Well, this is securely on my lap. Oh yeah, this is definitely why it's worth it. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mark Weems would definitely die for this one. Mmm, mmm. If you guys ever up in Santa Cruz area, these tacos are killer. They're Korean tacos, a fusion of Korean style with, of course, the only thing Mexican about it, I believe is the tortilla chips. Other than that, everything else is just pretty much standard. You got your lime, um, the pico de gallo, I think is probably a little bit different too than normal salsa. 
we're back here at the Taha Tahan Ranch. Pretty much the mall across the street is entirely closed. But you can see here I'm getting charged uh, $7.28 so far. We're gonna tap it off and head back home. I'm probably gonna get most of my charge at Fresno. It's slowing down because it's near the peak almost. It's 162 miles per hour charge. Not a lot. And currently it's billing me at $7.28. So I think I got here around 60 miles left or maybe so. I can't remember. But yep. Ugh. So hopefully, see here I'm not pretty much, this is pretty late in the evening now. It's uh, The time is about 7.30. So not too many people are open today. I didn't get a chance to go all the way to Long Beach, but I did give some tacos to my sister in Santa Frida, where she lives anyway. <laughs> she was still untrustworthy. So what I did was I put the bag of tacos in the in the trunk. And I did regret one thing I did was I put napkins in there for her because I thought, you know, it was a courtesy. But she said, oh, that wasn't a good thing at all. That's what you get for being a good guy. Anyway, I put it in here. She was able to grab it herself. I popped the trunk open and then closed it back and just didn't even give her a hug. You know what I mean? It's crazy how everything's good the way it is now. Not too much bug splats, you can see here. It's kind of nice out here, actually, to be honest with you. I feel, I feel just great just driving my Tesla around. Even if I have nowhere to go other than just going for a Korean taco. I got two more orders uh, packed for home. So two more orders to go anyway. Everything's to go. Just a few little whiskers. You know, little bug guts. Other than that, I can clean those when I get back home. So I'm not going to worry about them now. Because if I clean it right now, by the time I get to Fresno, I guarantee you, they're just going to be just as the same. But at least I got the most of them out from earlier this morning. I think the hood trunk liner looks really well too. So let's check that one out again. The gator's holding up pretty good. I'm always just curious to see how's it doing. I'm hoping that you won't see any more dirt here. For the fact is, um, you know, supposedly, I use a fluffy one if I just want to capture some dust out, not really rubbing anything. So I'll use this fluffy one right here. I already cleaned it. And we're going to test it out to see if this actually sealed here. It's in the description below. We'll actually do a great job or not. If not, we'll take it back off. But I think it will though. I mean, it serves its purpose. It's supposed to pretty much, pretty much create a barrier just like this wood flat, flat, create a barrier. This thing right here is supposed to create a barrier between pretty much the closing of this. I, just because yet I still have not been able to get to a scissor. I still have this little wobbly flap here begging me to uh, <laughs> cut it, cut me, cut me. All right, so it's funny. It looks like it's stretching on its own. Yeah. So I think I did a pretty good job aligning where I want it to be, pressing a little bit of the PPF as well. So I'm just going to give it a little, a little firm tap. I can't really stress it enough or else it'll just give it a little dance tap, I guess. That means it's being pressured. And I think it's being pressured some more anyway because I think by me doing it here, you can see there. Pretty neat. I think it's gonna hold quite nicely. So everyone's pretty much up to themselves. Not really anyone socializing much. I mean, we love to. Earlier this morning you saw me. You know, you know a few people are still, you know, daring to socialize a little bit because they just got their car they're excited so see this one guy there that did the chrome delete he got his almost a few months after i did he got his in november i got mine in august so i can understand his enthusiasm so people who get these cars they love it i mean uh they're affordable i mean you know they're still quite up there they're you know they're still like forty thousand, but still you can finance them and you know i mean it's so reliable I'm gonna jinx myself here because I'm about to go back home. By the time I get home, it'll probably be midnight. I'll spend another uh, maybe 40 minutes in Fresno, fill it up some more, and that's about it. So let's see here. I think we can get going now. As soon as it says Fresno 5%, I'm gonna let go. As long as I keep my road to about, let's see what it says in Fresno. All right, so Fresno 2% right now. I could take my chance of 2%, but it's cutting close. I'll just give it a few more minutes. <laughs> All right. I mean, worse than the worst, I had the EB thing here. Open glove box. 
I have this right here. I can always just go to a regular, you know, EV paid one. That's probably more available in between the, the Tesla supercharger. Plug this in here and just, you know, pay through their, their system or something, I'm sure. So that's worse than the worst, you know, I can always route the car to the nearest EV charger. But yeah, let's just wait for it. Give it at least to be on the safe side, at least 5%. So I'll wait till that says 5% and then I'll go and take it off. And then keep in mind though, it's always overestimating just in case you need that extra. If you drive it carefully or casually, this can actually increase to about 10%. In fact, we'll test it out by the time we get to Fresno. I'll do a, a final recording of today's event. Okay, so it's 4%, we're good. I'm not gonna actually spend more money than I need to be here. So I might as well just, you know, save it for the road. Cause the Fresno one is free again. So and it's not gonna be that busy anyway. So let's go ahead and unlock it. Say goodbye. There we go. Awesome. We'll close the trunk on the way out. Because that's how we roll. So I'll catch you guys in the Fresno one. See you guys in a little bit. The Fresno one, here we come. All right. Flickering. There we go. Well, there we go. It's closed. <laughs> you guys can see it. All right. See you guys at the Fresno one shortly. See the high beam comes on automatically right here the blue and all i did was kind of flicker while well, you can't see me unfortunately it's far about that and you can see what's great about the tesla is you can see the side mirrors are like they're freaking awesome they have like this little coated thing here where it like coats so it doesn't reflect light too bad so we're almost coming into our exit herd in here so i'm gonna go ahead and get ready and it should be preconditioned the battery for the supercharging let me go and hit the thing here you can see here when it's not high beaming it's actually disabled like kind of like gray See that? All right, there we go. This exit here we gotta get. You can see here it's kind of disabled gray a little bit. So I can get resolution on that. Focus there. See that that little A there stays there? Now I can take the A off. Again, I'll just flick this off here and then won't do auto high beam anymore. But I'll just go and set it for auto high beam. You'll see that A come back right on. So like that one right there I was talking about. Yeah, I was just going coasting 70 miles and you know what's funny is um, I actually had like almost 12 miles percent left uh, battery but I had to jet a little bit because there was like emerging traffic so I, I pretty much floored it uh, pretty much went up to 90 really quickly I used it a little bit of burst because you know avoid accident uh, didn't do it just for kind of showing it off but I needed to do it to avoid my accident so yeah so it says right here I have about five percent left and we would left that it's pretty accurate right we, it says we'll have like at least about four percent but look at that it actually is five percent now but earlier like I said again it was almost like uh, heads on so this is Herndon Avenue we'll exit here Herndon and Greatland huh so here we go we are coming into our supercharger look at that the high beam came right on you can see that that's what's great about this it just comes on when you need it and then it'll turn off when it sees like the opposite traffic uh, lights Let's see if I can get the resolution on this here Let's see if I can wipe the camera for a little bit there we go now we're coming to a stoplight and when it, detect there, it detects other lights coming you'll see that blue light will disappear but so far it's not detecting the uh, opposite traffic light so we can go about it keeps it on for you now it actually turns off you see that very cool very smart um you know before i you know people it's almost like a courtesy for other drivers who's driving around you that you have the high beam on for them so they can see the street lights and everything much more clear than if they were to not have auto high beam and it doesn't really do anything for you as far as having to manually do it it just the system automatically understands it so pretty convenient uh we got here around 9 50 now we have less than 10 miles of of charge left so <laughs> it's getting close but that's okay um, because this is free so it's kind of nice to be able to fill it up here now Tesla recommends you know I don't think Tesla recommends it they don't encourage it you know don't drain out your battery completely it's not like a cell phone or a laptop where you want to use it all up before you charge it again fully or else has that's you know memory or some sort it, it, it recommends just tapping it as you need it it doesn't recommend depleting it so keep it between I believe it's uh, uh I believe it says like 30% no lower than 30% to like maybe 80% full if you're just using it for daily but um, we're not so we took a long road trip I think it's fine uh, you can see here coming back to my favorite supercharger because it's free for one thing it's also just nice and let's see how fast it'll charge once we get the, the car parked so 
my favorite pieology pizza. Are they still open? Huh. It's already uh, 9.51. It's past 10 o'clock almost. Holy smoke. This is like ghost town for us. We are the only one here. I guess we can pick a number. I guess I'll pick one closest to the right here. It doesn't really matter. Look at that. No one's here, you guys. We got the whole setup to ourselves, so it's kind of interesting. I think this might be for the handicap. I don't know. But anyway, it doesn't really matter where I park because they're all going to be pretty much the same. Awesome. Let's go and hit reverse and let's find out how much it'll fastly charge it or not. There we go. I can go faster. And I'm getting used to this little rare before I was so scared. You know what I mean? When you first get your car, or it'll hit the, the rubber belt bump before it. Oh, there we go. That was a little, really fast reaction there. All right. So let's go ahead and see how it does charge. Uh, before I got caught off, I was going to show you how to actually turn the steering wheel on. Before, remember, I was trying to figure out how to set the steering wheel after it's already been plugged into the charger. So let's, first of all, let's see this. All right, there we go. Turns the blue, it cycles through. It looks like since I'm the only one here, it shouldn't be a problem, right? This is like a blue color, by the way. You can't probably tell. It's flickering really fast. I'm not sure what that means, but okay, there it goes green now. All right, let's see how much charge we have since we're the only one here, right? So we should be able to get super fast. All right, so let's check it out. All right, battery, vehicle consume battery power while idle, charge now to ensure, well, that's what we're here for. All right, here we go. Look at that. All right, 35 minutes remain, supercharger. Let's see what's gonna happen. Don't tell me I pull into the one. I don't think it's defective, but just give it some time. I'm waiting for you. You must understand this is supercharged in 35 minutes remaining. Maybe it needs time to warm up the battery, perhaps. Never had this experience before. Should charge it right away. You could set the limit. Oh, there it goes. Now it's ticking. You can set the limit to full or wherever you want to be at, but I'm going to set it all the way full because by the time you get to the house, it'll be at least 150 left. Wow, look at that. It's cranking it. Nice. 342. Come on, you can do better than that. I'm the only one here. And I'm really low. 335. Come on, can I get 400? Let's see if it goes to 400. No way. It's going to do me like that. I'm so used to having it close to 500 now. Maybe it takes some time. Oh, there we go. I saw a blink of 400 for a second there. It's like a teaser. Well, anyway, I want to show you guys. Uh, we'll come back to this. Um, so it locks the steering wheel even when you close it because it realized that the trunk's open. But what it did was it actually activated the steering wheel for you when you set it to game mode, right? Open entertainment. You could probably just say entertainment, really. It's, it's open. Entertainment. Oh, there we go. You can just say the word, actually. You don't have to say open or close unless you're trying. Now, another thing is you, when you tell it to turn off camera, it's, t it's thinking this one, so it's confused. So you want to make sure you say close camera. Camera. Okay. And then well, a lot of people, you can't actually just say close camera. I mean, turn off camera because it doesn't understand what you mean. Close, turn off camera. We're not going to turn off your rear camera. Turn off camera. Open, see, but you go close camera. That one understands. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead. Let me see if I can actually tell the program to actually go straight to Beach Buggy. Play Beach Buggy. Holy smoke! Oh, brought a whole bunch of music. Open Beach Buggy. Let's see this one. Open beach buggy game. Not bad. I think it just detect the word game, really. That was the key word, but close game. Okay, let's close that one for us. Okay, let's do this again. Open beach buggy game. I think it's just pretty much uses the keyword game and it just opens game okay so you see how this one is and even if you press the brakes it still won't let you it's warning you that 
you know, your charge is no doesn't like. But however, when you trigger the beach buggy game, all of a sudden the steering wheel, we're gonna go ahead and play game, just a play game, so we can turn the steering wheel. There it goes. See, look. Now it allows you to rotate the steering wheel for the game, but it won't allow you to do it just to do it uh, for the reason. So we're going to exile that, and then you just hit exit. You don't have to start the game or anything like that. But let's just check our charging now. It's 30 miles right now. Ooh, nice. 473 miles charging at 103 kilowatts. It added 21 miles while we're just talking a little bit here. So I'm just going to finish charging this up. I might even just do 100 miles only and just finish the rest at home because, you know, time is in the, it's not in my favor. But in case, um, you know, I think I'll probably stay around, hang out here until midnight perhaps. I don't know. By the time I get home, it's going to be another 60 minute drive. So 10, if I stay here for another 40 or 50 minutes to have it fully charged and I probably won't be home until midnight so it just depends i want to get home an hour earlier just charge at home let trickle charge you know with my uh, nema 1450 which allows it to do six hours charging which you know i mean i'm not gonna i'm gonna go sleep i'm not gonna care how long the car is gonna charge i just want to make sure it charges when i need to depart so you can actually schedule your charging at a certain time for instance you know i start i saw tell i'm gonna depart at eight o'clock i want you to have the charge ready for me full now this is a good feature because if you actually wanted to charge a certain time to have the battery ready for you when you're about to take off, this is better for you instead of having it prematurely charged too early. And that one, it's going to be consuming the battery again by the time you actually have it. You're less than like 20 or 30% because it's using it for sentry mode, like the recording and so forth, security. And so by the time you really need the car, it's not going to do you a good solid. So it's good for uh, scheduling because a lot of time your electricity, I think, is saved before if you can use it before 8 a.m. or 7 a.m. Anyway, that's what my brother told me, so I believe him. So I'll set it for like 7 a.m. to schedule uh, charge. So whatever the battery's at that level, low, so if it needs six hours to charge 200 miles, then it's going to start charging around 1 o'clock in the morning for me. Uh, you know, and then you can set it for weekdays or weekends, whichever... You know convenient for you but we're gonna just turn it off for right now uh we're just doing a manual force charge so it's going pretty good since i'm the only one here again like i said i'm not sure it feels like a zombie town um i'm just gonna let it uh, pretty much cycle too oh there it goes and i finally hit green i was in the yellow zone for i was in the red <laughs> red to yellow to now you know i think the battery as it's warming up is going a little bit faster i think it doesn't force to charge that fast if your battery's not entirely warmed up so but other than that, I think if you had like the certain uh, all-wheel drive or performance edition, I think it, it can even, uh, the V3 charges anyway, can take this bad boy up to almost a thousand miles per hour charge. So you could be done getting 200 miles, you know, and charge battery less than probably 20 minutes. So I really like this part where it says current session, zero dollars to narrow. Yeah, I was able to adjust the lumbar support even when the car is not in motion. So that shouldn't be a problem at all. So you guys know next time. Uh, I'm not sure why I turned my steering wheel this way. I got a habit of just <laughs> using my uh, uh, steering wheel tray. In fact, I can use it right now because I need to actually do some editing, right? So let's do this. Here we go. I can use the other surface because it doesn't need to cup hold or anything like that. Look at that. Oh, hey, yeah, this will work beautifully. Okay, got that set away. I can get the dome light for you guys. Turn this one off, right? Don't need to see this one. You guys can just focus on that one. How cool is that? I get my laptop out. There I go. Midnight office here at the Tesla Supercharger. Off a herd, and I guess I could do everything here. <laughs> I just, I wish I uh, brought my sleeping bag with me. I took it back home. I didn't actually leave it. I should just leave it in the trunk. There you go. Look at that. Put it turned on. How cool is this? Just kicking back. I can type away if I want to. Nice. There you go. Check out all. So when you do, you go into my upload screen. For the, this was from yesterday. We did that video link. And you can find all the parts that I use in the description below to make your life convenient. So that's what you prefer as well. Including everything from the handheld vacuum. To picking up your mess while you're eating or... That. Just very cool stuff. Get all picked up from you. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I told it to lock the door as well. It's very simple with the command. So, pretty much, let's say, for instance, we unlocked it, right? 
for security. Okay, and then we can just push this button here. I'm gonna do it from afar, that way you can see exactly. Lock car. There it is. You can see now. Well, actually, you can see it closer better. Unlock car. All right, see that? It turned on the own light. Lock car. You'll see it read it. And then you see that little icon indicating that it's been locked back. So there goes in our sentry mode. Uh, I guess while it's charging, I guess it assumes that we're here. Uh, it should be turned on. There we go. Oh, that is on now. I didn't realize it wasn't on. Yeah, sentry mode, you want it on just for whatever reason. And the camera is constantly recording. So, yeah, get some work done here. And uh, that's it. We're just going to finish this up, uh, let it fully charge on its own. I might be able to move some files over, merge some files. I'm learning a little bit of video editing, so you guys will probably start seeing a little bit of improvement as far as speeding up the video, not making you wait on the tedious stuff. I was actually controlling my fan and think it was my AC, but I can actually set my temperature. Uh, this is where the temperature gauge is, so I was trying to scroll it. I couldn't get it to perfectly 73. And I'm thinking, gosh, you know how I'm going to do it, so set temperature at 73. Watch the 72 become 73. Well, I kept on talking. Oh, it still changed it for me. Awesome. And then I thought this was actually the temperature right here, but that's actually just the fan. So I'm going to go ahead and tell it now. Set fan to 10. Set fan to 10. There you go. Look at that speed right there. It's in 10 now. Okay, now what? Turn fan up. Let's see what that is. Direct fan up. I think it's directing up. Oh, yeah. You guys see that? <laughs> Direct fan down. Direct fan down. All right, let's check it out. Open fan. I just wanted to open the fan setting. Display fan setting. <laughs> Direct fan up. Oh, nice. What a watermark show. Direct fan down. Oh, direct and down. Direct fan down. Open fan setting. Not bad. Direct fan up. <laughs> I really like that part. Okay. Set fan speed to three. We're gonna change this to back to number three. Let's see if it does it. I think it did do it. Open fan setting. So you can see that? It says three right there. Awesome. Set temperature to 60. Bingo, just popped on. So that's pretty awesome, voice command. <laughs> Very last bit here while I'm driving home. Uh, so I'm pretty much almost home in Merced. Uh, let's see here, it tells me. All right, let's see here. Yep. I'll get home at approximately, let me tap this. It shows I'll be home pretty much around 11.22. So I'll be home at 11.22, and I'll have 63% uh, charge left, so quite a while. There it goes. Awesome. All right, we're almost home, and uh, I just want to show you guys a new trick I just kind of learned along the way. Fan setting. Fan up. <laughs> 
fan down. Temperature 73. It's currently 60 right now. Temperature 63. Temperature 63. There you go. Temperature 73. Fan setting right on there for us. Set fan speed two. Two. <laughs> Twice just to make sure it says it. Okay. Fan setting. Fan setting. Set fan speed to two. Set fan speed to five. Fan setting. Okay, that's easy. I guess the word number two is kind of a little bit harder for it. Set fan speed to six. There it goes, there's six right there. It just jumped to it. Set fan speed to seven. Fan setting. There is seven. Set fan speed to eight. Change it. Set fan speed to nine. Set fan speed to ten. Open fan setting. Set fan speed to ten. Let me see if I can do a double command. Set fan speed to 10. There you go. All right. Set temperature to 60. <laughs> nice. All right, so you can't really tell it to go dog mode or camping mode because your car is under full driving. So it's only when it's parked, I guess. So that's cool. Turn fan off. Turn fan off. Nice. Fan setting. Fan down. Make this go down. <laughs> nice, look at that. I didn't actually pull up my finger, so hopefully you guys didn't get that. Fan up. <laughs> you see that? Fan setting. Anyway, we played with it too much, we're almost home. <laughs> so, it pretty much drove the whole time we we're doing all these settings here. So let me go ahead and uh, focus back on the road here. Because uh, I wasn't for a while there. But I kept the eye out a little bit to see where the upcoming traffic was. It pretty much guided, kept on the zone lane and everything. So, it's very cold now. Temperature, 73. Quickly change your temperature just like that. Voice command is so much easier than having to push the button scrolling. You get into much more of an accident. So just having the voice command is such an awesome feature that Tesla was able to integrate with their updates. That's what I love about this car. It just makes changes via OTA over the air update. So very cool. Awesome. I'll see you guys next time in the next video.